Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. Today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to set up a brand new calcium reactor. All right guys, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And as you may have noticed in a previous video, I did mention that the alkalinity in my frag tank had managed to whittle its way all the way down to 4.4 dKH. Now, I very gently added some dosing to that to bring it back up into the six dKH range. However, I really didn't wanna go dosing on that system because I'm a big fan of calcium reactors. So I went out and picked up this brand new Cove calcium reactor to fit it up to that system to ensure that we're getting alkalinity calcium magnesium and even a little bit of trace element supplementation to that tank and I figured I should probably get this in front of the camera and make sure I go through it all with you guys step by step both going over what you get with the Cove Calcium Reactor, what equipment you need to get this system running and then personally how I go about tuning it into the system. So uh, let's jump into it and open up this big box here. All right, if you can still see me from the box there, we've got uh, some instructions. We've got a uh, catalog, it's a couple of years old, but I'm sure it's still good. And then uh, inside here, we've got a couple of uh, pretty neat little uh, tote bags with bits and pieces. There's gonna be some tubing or something in there. I assume this guy here is the reactor itself. And as you can see, it's a decent sized unit. All right. Now that we've got the reactor out of the bag, you can see there is very little assembly to do. The unit comes mostly assembled. You basically just need to cut off some of the tape holding pieces in place and then fit up this gas and water mixing chamber, which is super easy to do thanks to the two unions on it. Once we get in a little bit closer, you can have a look at some of the details of this Cove CR200 calcium reactor. Got a pH Pro port up the top there, the effluent outlines, some recirculation lines. They're all labeled so you know exactly what is happening. We've got two beautiful chambers here, the main one for your coral bone, the second one for your magnesium media, or just some more coral bone. On the pump here, we've got the Aquabee Up 2000, a very nice German made pump, very efficient. It's got unions on either side to make easy servicing. And then you can see this gas and water mixing chamber, which pretty much looks like a K1 media, which is gonna give us a few different channels for water and gas to mix through there, ensuring you're getting absolute efficiency out of the reactor. Coming over here, you can see all of the lines, all of the thumb screws making nice, easy servicing of this reactor. We've got a standard and traditional bubble counter there, which I will use to dial in the CO2 additions. You can see the water inline there, which is powered by the Aquabee pump, so you don't need a feed pump. And then we've got this little addition here, which is a uh, gas speed measuring device. Personally, I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna remove that because my regulator for the CO2 will uh, have that all built in. So one less point of uh, contention for me, but what a beautiful reactor this thing is. All right, there we have it, the uh, Cove CR200 calcium reactor. And I have to say, this is a big boy. It's gonna hold quite a bit of media and um, I'm uh, certain that this is gonna stop me having to fill any media on that frag tank for some time, despite the fact that it's very rapidly chewing through some elements at the moment. There's not a lot to explain on this calcium reactor. I know it looks like there's a lot happening, but uh, you've got your main chamber here. You've got a second chamber here. This is where your uh, gas comes in and it's already labeled for you. It's a CO2 in on this little uh, sticker here. You've got a little uh, flow meter for your uh, CO2 there, which um, it does connect up to it. I have heard that they can sometimes leak, so sometimes people bypass them. We'll see how we go with that. You can see a big bubble counter here, and then uh, you've got your pump, which uh, it looks like it sucks in through this way, pushes out through the bottom, which will then come up over the top. Uh, it will then go through this reactor. Looks like we've got some circulation between the two, and uh, basically from there we have, let's circulate, circulate, this one's an outlet and there should be an inlet down here. Yeah, so we feed water in here. Now with the Cove calcium reactor, apparently you don't need a feed pump. It's designed so that because the intake is here, that the included Aquabee pump here is actually gonna be enough of a feed to draw the supply water in. Then you can just restrict the outlet or I guess the inlet as well. And uh, that will allow you to tune it in. So I've never ran a calcium reactor that way. I've always given them a feed pump. So I'm curious to see how that works. The next thing we really need to do is uh, open up these uh, chambers here, feed some media in there, and then uh, go put it in position. We've got the instructions here. We've got some additional tubing for our uh, CO2 and for our inlet and outlets. And uh, we've got some taps and bits and pieces there. 
Let's go about filling it up. All right, I've got the reactor now ready to put my media in. I've got four containers of the arm um, extra coarse, and I've also got some two little fishies remag just to ensure that I've got plenty of magnesium media in my reactor. This one I should be right to pour straight in. This one I'll just put a little cup over the uh, pipe here just because I don't want media getting stuck in that tube. Other than that, we're good to go. You probably could rinse your media. Personally, I'm not too fussed about it. Um, if there's a little bit of dust in there, so be it. I'm gonna run this without actually putting the effluent into the system for a little while, just to make sure that all the air and all of the dust and stuff is out of the media. I'll drain that out, and then we'll put some new water and it will be good to go. So um, I'm just gonna put a little shot glass over that. Fits like a glove. Now we're right to pour this in, which is probably gonna make a bit of noise. I just want to do a quick test fit. Okay, so we can come probably up to about the height of height of that panel there of media. So I should be able to get one more of these in there. That looks near on perfect. Let's pour some into this one. Now, before I fill up the second chamber, I'm just gonna put the uh, remag media in there. It does say to rinse briefly in tap water, so let's do it. Just draining as much of that tap water that I can out of that packet. That should be pretty good. I'll pour this one in here. Perfect. Pour a little bit more in this one. And it's starting to look like I've measured the uh, amount of media required fairly well because uh, that's probably exactly the level that I would want to fill this up to. So I'm going to uh, get this O-ring to sit in position. All right, skewer that lid back down. Just before I put that lid on, I probably should pre-fill this with some water. It just makes it a little bit easier to uh, fill up. So I might take the lid off, go fill up one of these jugs with a bit of salt water and uh, get some capacity in here. Although I might actually do that once I've got the reactor in position because it's gonna get pretty heavy. Because it's already quite heavy. Uh, by the time we fill it up with some water, it's gonna get even heavier again. So. Uh, Let's put this second chamber partially together. I'll just sit a couple of these screws on there just so we don't lose it. All right, there are a other couple of components required to get a calcium reactor running other than the reactor and some media. You're gonna need a bottle, a regulator, and something to turn the regulator on and off. Now, in this instance, I will be using a GHL Prophylax Mini. I won't actually go into that in this video here. We're just gonna get the water flowing through that, uh, through that calcium reactor, make sure that it's all sealing up nice and tightly and circulating well. In the next video, I'll show you how we program it up, but uh, bear in mind, you will need these components as well. All right, just a quick update. It's one of those things where you got to uh, do as I say, not as I do. I initially uh, put this in position and started filling it up. Um, did kind of forget that this uh, little uh, inlet here was not blocked off and it just started pouring water out everywhere. So I uh, quickly chucked that tap on it, took it outside and um, filled her up with water and now she is leak free. But uh, it has pointed out to me just how milky the uh, water has gone. So what I might do while it's out here, because it's gonna be quite heavy while it's full of water, I'm gonna open that tap up, drain her out so it's empty. Then I'll put it back in position and fill it up with some clean water again and that'll can count as a uh, rinse of the media. 
All right, now that I've got the calcium reactor in place, I was able to hook up the uh, outlet line, the inlet line down here. I've blocked off the CO2 inlet for now because I just want to run the unit with water flowing through it just to get all the, uh, all the air bubbles and all of the dust and stuff out of the uh, media. Once I'm happy that it's not leaking and that uh, is running as expected, then we'll hook up the CO2 inlet and we'll control that via the GHL Prophylux Mini. So um, slightly nerve wracking moment, it's in the position. Thankfully, um, we don't care too much about this carpet. In fact, the plan was actually to replace this with a, a waterproof floor, but um, I got a little bit impatient and set the tank up on top of it, which, um, at the end of the day, I still don't want to get um, <laughs> still don't want to get water on the carpet. So uh, fingers crossed, there's no leaks. I'm going to plug the power in. All right, we are off and running. There is still a fair bit of air in the media, just trapped from um, all the rocks going in. Plus, uh, it's difficult to fill the unit up completely. Although it just quietened up a fair bit as the uh, oxygen, although well, you can see still a fair bit of oxygen in there. Once all those air bubbles get out of the unit, it should run dead silently. But um, first initial impressions are there are no leaks. We are looking good. I'm gonna let this guy run. Let's see if we've got any outlets yet. We do. I'll bring the camera over there so you can see we've got a uh, somewhat inconsistent outlet at the moment, but I'm gonna assume that's because of all the oxygen flowing through the unit. We're just gonna let that run for a little while and um, then we'll touch base when we're ready to go to step two. All right, I'll bring the camera in so you can have a close look at the effluent here. At the moment, it's fairly inconsistent while it's uh, got a bit of uh, gas and water passing its way through. I can open that up just to help bleed the uh, gas out of it and you can see how spluttery it is. Once all that trapped oxygen makes its way out of the system, that should get a lot more consistent. Then, of course, we're going to complicate things by adding CO2 to the uh, reactor, but it's not going to be in the volume that you see here. And in fact, through the recirculation ports, you can see just how much oxygen is still trapped in this reactor. We'll see how that fares over the next couple of days. All right, it has been an hour, and uh, as you can see, the frag tank's a little murky. That's mostly from all of the bubbles, but there will be a little bit of cloudiness coming off the media. It is, believe it or not, starting to clear up in the reactor, though, so I think that uh, if we give it another hour or two, or even overnight, we should be pretty clear. No big deal. I'm happy to let it run like this for a few days at least before I even consider hooking up the CO2, so um, we're in no rush there, and uh, you see the outlet's just whistling away as it's passing air and water, which is all good. All right, guys, so it's been a few days now, three or four days since I plumbed up the Cove CR200 calcium reactor, and I'm pleased to say that it is fully bedded in now. You'll notice we don't have oxygen flowing through the system, and the reactor itself is now dead silent. Probably more importantly, there is no leaks, because uh, otherwise I'd be sitting on some soggy cup now, which ain't any fun at all. I'll give you a little bit of a close-up of the reactor and give a brief overview of how the water flows through the system, but we'll delve into the uh, science behind how it delivers balanced alkalinity calcium and magnesium plus a bit of trace element supplementation in the upcoming video when I hook up the CO2 to this reactor and actually get it reducing the pH in this chamber and um, actually melting some of that media and giving us what we're after but because that is a pretty big step as well I thought I'd split this video up into two so we've done most of the legwork now our reactor's in place it's drawing water in it's passing it through the media and pushing it back out at a consistent speed which is uh very important with calcium reactors, it's all about uh, eliminating variables. So we've got a nice consistent speed of effluent without any feed pump, which is a big plus. You save a lot of money without having to purchase a feed pump. So I guess what I'm saying is I'll wrap the video up here. Please do subscribe so you don't miss out on part two of this calcium reactor install because we will go into all of the details about how you then take it from being something that holds media and water to something that's then putting CO2 in there and melting your media and getting your alkalinity, calcium and magnesium levels exactly where you want them. All right, the uh, bright orange line down there is the intake line, which I've just secured with that uh, beautiful clip from the uh, automatic top-off unit I'm running on this system, but it does keep that line nicely secured under the water, which then brings that over to our reactor. Now, it goes through the inlet here. The pump 
has enough suction from the inlet side there that it actually draws the water in. I've got a tap there after my uh, little boo-boo when I filled this unit up without anything blocking that off. Um, it just gives me the ability to uh, turn that tap off and then disconnect this line if I need to move the reactor out. But the water comes in via this uh, pump here and then gets pushed out into the main chamber here. From there, the water comes up through all of our calcium carbonate media. In this instance, I'm using Arm Extra Coarse. And it then comes up here where it goes through our recirculation lines, which brings it down to the bottom of this reactor, or this chamber, I should say, then up through some more calcium carbonate media Media onto my magnesium media. If I find that this reactor is not giving me enough magnesium supplementation down the line, I can open up this chamber here and add some more magnesium media. But uh, for now, I'm going to hope that that's just fine. We then also have some lines up here, like these ones here, which will recirculate. This is a high point, so any gas that gets circulated through the system when we add the CO2 in and doesn't get fully dissolved and bringing the uh, pH down, will circulate back over here to get sucked back in via the pump again and go the full lap again, which makes the reactor very efficient on gas usage because uh, you don't want to be replacing a gas bottle every month. You want to get a good three, four, six, maybe more months out of the bottle. So we'll see how this Cove reactor goes on its gas usage, but I'm quite confident so far. From there, we've got this outlet line here, which should be labeled, it is. The outlet line comes over, and then I've just got that sitting into the sump at the moment with a tap, just slowing it down a little bit so we are just at a solid trickle. That's probably the speed I'll keep this at. Normally I'll use a feed pump and I'll set it at a known value, so it might be something like, I don't know, 50 mil a minute, something like that. In this instance, I'm just going to keep this above a drip, so it's just at the point where it's trying to break out into a drop, but it's just a little bit more than that, so it keeps it at a steady stream. That's how I know I'll keep that consistent. And from there, I'm just gonna alter the pH in this chamber. But uh, like I touched on, we will cover that all in the upcoming video. If you've got any questions, comments, or feedback about part one of this video, feel free to pop it in the comment section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment down there, so it is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, stay safe and keep reefing. Cheers, bye.